It's time for members' statements. I recognize the member for Brantford Grant. Thank you, Speaker. As many of you are aware, my riding of Brantford Grant is home to a vibrant, motivated, and active cadet movement. Our community is home to a 135 Admiral Nellis, Royal Canadian Sea Cadets, 104 Starfighter Royal Canadian Air Cadets, 2659 Royal Canadian Army Cadets, and the Admiral Landymore Navy League Cadet Corps. Today, we welcome the top cadets as chosen by their commanding officers for their dedication, excellence, and willingness to make our community the best that it can be. The cadets of Brantford Brant are back to full training this past year from a challenging past two and a half years of virtual and hybrid training. These cadets made the transition back to in-person training with ease. For the Royal Canadian Sea Cadets, Chief Petty Officer First Class Aurora Linnington and Chief Petty Officer Second Class Charlie Downey, joined by Acting Sub-Lieutenant Kyle O'Coin. For the Royal Canadian Air Cadets, Corporal Danica Parisram and Sergeant Tobias Van Berkel, joined by Commanding Officer Captain Selena Corner. For the Royal Canadian Army Cadets, Master Warrant Officer Kiriana Jorgensen and Warrant Officer Ethan Russell, joined by Commanding Officer Captain Josh Jenny. For the Navy League of Canada, we have Leading Cadet Alyssa Bartlett and Ordinary Cadet Nathan Learned, joined by Commanding Officer Lieutenant Lieutenant Richard Carpenter and Sub-Lieutenant Selena Barnard. Cadets, officers, the people of Ontario salute you for your hard work and contribution to Brantford Grant. Thank you. Okay. Member statements. The member for Timiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, last week, I made the House aware of uh, three events that happened near the town of Inglehart on Highway 11, a tragic head-on transport crash, a transport driver who forced a school bus into the ditch and fled the scene, another transport who passed another transport in the hill. On Saturday, and I posted the video, a transport passed another transport with another car plainly in view and pushed it off the road. This happens, and this is within a few kilometers of a little town, and this happens right across our two-lane Trans-Canada Highway. I am imploring the government, we want to work together with the government to make sure that transport drivers, that all drivers are adequately trained, but that we actually get aggressive drivers off the road and the companies that hire them. The, the, the names of the companies are on the side of the trucks. We know what's happening. It's happening almost, it's happening every day, four times in a month, just outside my hometown. We cannot keep on letting this go because the next people who get killed, it's on us because we know it's going to happen. We all know it's going to happen. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Newmarket Aurora. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Saturday, May 6th at 6 a.m., I held a coronation viewing event at my local Aurora Royal Canadian Legion for my community members of Newmarket Aurora. It was absolutely amazing to have the community come together for this momentous historical event. The fascinators and vintage hats were as beautiful as the smiles on everyone's faces. I think the tasty scones and the coronation quiche also helped with those smiles. The Holy Coronation Service was also riveting, officiated by Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. We were all eagerly watching the traditional event, the recognition to the coronation oath, to the anointing, to the investiture, and finally to the enthronement and homage. One of my personal points of interest was the sword of offering, which symbolizes the protection of good and the punishment of evil. It was delivered to the Archbishop and then placed in the King's right hand. The King rose and the sword was fastened to His Majesty's waist using the sword belt. 
I would like to quote the Archbishop from his sermon at the coronation. With the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the King is given freely what no ruler can ever attain through will or politics or war or tyranny. The Holy Spirit drives us, draws us to love in action. May God bless our sovereign. Long live the King. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the incredible work of some grade four and five students in my riding in West St. Catharines at Edith Cavell Public School. Last week, I toured the Fresh West Market, which has provided over 400 bags of fresh fruit and vegetables to families in the community with the support of the United Way, Niagara Region Public Health, Links for Greener Learning, and a great team of educators at District School Board of Niagara. In February, they provided close to 800 pounds of fresh fruit and vegetables and surpassed that in the following month by providing over 1,200 pounds of fresh produce. On why they started the program, students told me, quote, we realize that although there are some grocery stores in our area, it's hard to get fresh fruit and vegetables at a low cost. Our goal is to increase our community's access to a variety of fresh, affordable produce. With almost 300 pounds total provided to the community speaker, I would say they are well on the way to reaching their goal. Special thanks to all those involved with this program, including public health nurse Austin White, teacher Allison Edward, Principal Robin Schubel, Ashley Doyle from United Way, and of course the incredible students at Edith Cavell. I look forward to their next market dates taking place on May 11th and June 8th. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on April 30th, I had the pleasure of attending the Manatic Legion Youth Education Awards Ceremony, organized by the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 314, one of the many amazing legions located in my riding of Carleton. The Royal Canadian Legion's youth education program plays an essential role in my riding of Carleton in fostering, in fostering the tradition of remembrance amongst youth, not just across Ottawa, but across Canada. The awards that 25 winners from my riding received are in recognition of the excellence they have shown in the Legion's youth education program. However, the journey of completing their work is much more important than the awards they received. Whether it be through artwork, a poem, or an essay, what they have created provides an important bridge between today's world and some of the most important and defining moments in Canadian history. Those defining moments in our history were made possible by generations of heroes whose hardships and sacrifices created the template for Canada to become the best country in the world. Through the Legion's education program, we are not only teaching our youth about our past, but are preparing them to become leaders in the years to come. So thank you to Roy Blair, Lynn Sharon, the entire Legion, and all 25 students for helping keep our rich history alive. I was honoured to present all 25 youth with certificates on behalf of the province of Ontario to recognise and honour their artwork and poems about Remembrance Day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for London North Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Working with a thought of self or thought of reward is the true nature of service. On Saturday, I had the honour of attending the London Central Lions and East London Lions Clubs Colour the Night Gold in support of Child Camp, two great clubs working together for a wonderful cause. I sat with Greg and Catherine Miller, who had sent me many petitions about optometry since 2021. It's a small world sometimes, as I also ran into Greg and Catherine face to face at their home when I was out knocking doors, speaking with the good people of London North Centre. At our table, Luca told me about how nurses should be paid what they're worth, allowed to bargain fairly, and that there should be incentives to bring back retired nurses whom this government has insulted, demeaned, and pushed out of practice. Luca also told me, and I quote, I used to be anti-union, but since Premier Ford, I am pro-union. You can tell him that. Message delivered, Luca. I want to thank the Lions for supporting Child Can. Families of children who receive the diagnosis of cancer are on the most difficult journey one could imagine. We heard about how Child Can helps families right from diagnosis, treatment, and through their recovery or bereavement journey. This great organization helps take the burden off of external worries, allowing families to focus on what matters most, their children and their care. Thank you once again, Lions and Child Can, for your true service to people in our community. 
Nazi plane again tonight. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I wanted to rise in the House uh, this morning and raise a very important issue to not only my riding of Brampton North, but uh, quite frankly, the province of Ontario. Uh, Speaker, in Ontario, cars stolen every 48 minutes. Auto theft has been on the rise over the last number of years, with a 72 percent increase from 2014 to 2021. And last year, that increase was 14 percent. And as we know, the GTA is a hot zone for crooks to steal cars, and the hardworking residents of Brampton North are fed up. They work hard for their money, and with 90 percent of homes in my riding having a driveway, they deserve to feel safe and have the peace of mind that their cars will stay on their driveway, not poached by some low-life scumbag. But since 2021, in Peel Region, carjackings have risen by 45 percent. Peel Regional Police Chief uh, Nishan Daripa has uh, described the impact of vehicle theft on public safety as tremendous. He also states it is one of the fastest growing problems that we have in not just the Golden Horseshoe, but right across Ontario. Speaker, that's exactly why our government is taking decisive, strong action. Last week, our Solicitor General announced a $51 million investment to combat auto theft. We're supporting new measures to help police identify and dismantle organized crime networks and put these behind bars where they belong. Speaker, our government's providing police services with the resources they need to make Ontario safer for all car owners, reduce auto theft, and bring those involved in these criminal networks to justice. I, uh, I support it wholeheartedly. Uh, let's get it done. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Beaches, East York. Thank you, and good morning, um, everyone, especially uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, while the member from Guelph may disagree, I think I have the greenest riding in all of Ontario. The climate activist groups and ecotastic events are making changes in Beaches East York and beyond. This past weekend, I participated in the Eco Fair held by Beach United Church and organized by the amazing Marianne Knowlton and her terrific team. There were 35 vendors, exhibitors, and speakers, all with one major thing in common, a love of the planet. Out of my office, we run Green East, a community group engaged and interested in serious climate action. To name just a few others, um, terrific Toronto East and Climate Collective, our residents concerned about and fighting the climate crisis. Sensational 32 spokes um, is comprised of cycling champions promoting cycling safety. The Great Garden at Kimborne Church is a project using permaculture principles to grow food and community um, in the community. Sensational Save Smalls Creek is a group working to preserve the nature of beautiful Smalls Creek Ravine. If we could replicate the care and climate action from Beaches East York across the province, we could make a real difference in addressing our environmental footprint. To my ecotastic residents and all Ontarians, I will continue to represent you as an environmental and climate advocate at Queen's Park. Thank you for listening so intently. Thank you very much. We're going to wait a second. I would ask the House to please quieten down. Member statements. The member for Essex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The month of May is recognized as Community Living Month here in Ontario. This year's theme is Inclusion Matters. Community Living Ontario and its over 115 community, community living associations across the province support over 80,000 people with intellectual disability and their families. From my community of beautiful Essex, I'd like to welcome Essex County Community Living, who is here with us today. Thank you for all that you do. These agencies offer a wide range of supported living, social, respite, planning and employment supports, all with the goal of fostering inclusive communities 
by supporting the rights and choices of people with an intellectual disability. It's important to recognize the hard work of staff in developmental services sectors because without them, none of this would be possible. And this year, Community Living Toronto is celebrating its 75th anniversary. I'm happy to share that Community Living Ontario and Community Living Toronto would like to invite all members to their reception today at 5 p.m. in the dining room, and I look forward to seeing everyone there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements? The member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise to recognize the talented Lorena McKenna of Stratford. Many will know Lorena for her work as a talented singer, actress, and composer. She's also a two-time Juno Awards winner. However, I would like to take this opportunity, Speaker, to congratulate Lorena on a new accomplishment. Lorena was recently inducted into the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame. She has also received a fine tribute at the Opera House in Toronto during International Women's Day. This is a great achievement and will add Lorena to an exclusive list of Canadians to receive such an honour, including Alanis Morissette, Brian Adams, David Foster and many other legends. Along with the, these great accolades, the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame at the National Music Centre in Calgary is dedicating a permanent exhibit to Ms. McKenna. Lorena has been a lifelong resident of the city of Stratford and has contributed so much to our community through her volunteer work and putting on many charity performances. She has also long contributed to the yearly Remembrance Day ceremonies at the Stratford Cenotaph. As an honorary colonel in the Royal Canadian Air Force, she has worked hard to keep our memories of our veterans alive in the minds of all Canadians. Congratulations again, Lorena, and on all of your hard work and all the success you've had over the past four decades. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. I understand the member for Markham Unionville has a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you seek it, you will find unanimous consent to allow members to wear purple ribbons in recognition of May 10th being Lupus Awareness Day. Mr. Pang is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to allow members to wear purple ribbons in recognition of May 10th being Lupus Awareness Day. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. I understand the member for Guelph has a point of order. Thank you, Speaker. I'm seeking unanimous consent of the House that notwithstanding Standing Order 100A4, five minutes be allotted to the independent members as a group to speak on second reading of private members' bill M100. Mr. Schreiner is seeking the unanimous consent of the House that notwithstanding Standing Order 100A4, that five minutes be allotted to the independent members as a group to speak on second reading of private members' bill M100. Agreed? No. I heard a no. 